Hey everyone. Welcome to our channel 10x Gen AI, where we dive into the fascinating world of technology and innovation. In the last video, we have seen how to build a simple chatbot UI with Streamlit and OpenAI model. Using an LLM in isolation like this is fine for simple applications, but what if we have a more complex application that requires chaining LLMs, either with other LLMs or with other components? We have also seen that our chatbot conversations are stored in a streamlit session state which is maintained in the memory, but what if the session is closed? What if the user starts a new session and wants to continue from where it is left off? What if you want the LLM to invoke a tool or a function? What if you want to call back to another component in the workflow of your application? For all these questions, there is only one answer. Welcome to Langchain Framework. In this video, we will understand what is Langchain Framework, when we use it, what are the different modules or components present in this framework, and we will understand each of these modules in detail, with working examples. This is our fourth video in the series of All About Chat GPT videos. Please check the playlist link given in the description. So, let's get started. We will start off by looking at what is Langchain Framework and when do we use it. Simply put, this is a framework for developing applications powered by language models. In the last video, we have seen calling out to OpenAI's language model via an API, but if we want to build a real-time application with more nuances added to it, such as connecting language model to other sources of data, or allowing language model to interact with other tools, we use Langchain Framework. There are various components in Langchain Framework, but the main components that everyone must know are chains, agents, callbacks, and memory. Let's understand these components one by one. Chains allow us to combine multiple components together to create a single, coherent application. For example, we can create a chain that takes user input, formats it with a prompt template, and then passes the formatted input to an LLM. We can build more complex chains by combining multiple chains together, or by combining chains with other components. This idea of composing components together in a chain is simple but powerful. It drastically simplifies the implementation of complex applications and makes them more modular, which in turn makes it much easier to debug, maintain, and improve your applications. There are multiple types of chains available, in that the basic one is LLM chain. Let's look at an example of LLM chain and understand the practicalities of chains. Make sure you have Python version greater than or equal to 3.8.1. First, install the Langchain and OpenAI libraries if not already installed. Let's import the necessary libraries. Set an environment variable for OpenAI API key. To use the LLM chain, we first define an LLM and then create a prompt template like this. The prompt template defines a list of input variables, which is product, in this example and a user query. Let's import the LLM chain from langchain.chains, and create a chain object which takes the LLM and the prompt. Now run the chain by specifying the value for the input variable, product. And here is the answer from the LLM for the given input. Now, let's look at agents. The primary function of agents is to utilize a language model to make decisions regarding a sequence of actions to take. In the context of chains, this sequence of actions is hard-coded. However, in the case of agents, a language model serves as a reasoning engine to determine which actions to take, and in which order. Agents consist of several key components, including the agent itself, tools, toolkits, and the agent executor. The agent, as a class, assumes the responsibility of determining the next step to take. 
This decision-making process is facilitated by a language model and a prompt. In Langchain, various types of agents are available, with the most commonly used ones being Zeroshot React, Structured Input React, and OpenAI functions. We will delve deeper into these agent types during practical exercises. The second component of agents is the set of tools. These tools represent functions that an agent can invoke. Langchain provides a predefined set of tools to get started, but you also have the flexibility to define your own. Next, we have Toolkit, a concept introduced by Langchain, which essentially comprises a group of tools, designed to achieve a specific objective. Typically, a toolkit encompasses around 3 to 5 tools. Langchain offers a wide array of toolkits to assist users, including SQL Database, Pandas Data Frame, Vector Store, and more. The Agent Executor serves as another vital component within the agent's framework. It acts as a runtime environment for an agent, actively invoking the agent and executing the actions it selects. Now, let's construct a basic agent. First, let's load the language model which we use to control the agent. Next, let's define a tool to use. Let's write a really simple Python function to calculate the length of a word that is passed in. Please note the function definition should contain this decorator at the rate of tool. Also having a short description of the function in docstring is essential for LLM to understand which tool to use. Now let us create the prompt. We can use a helper function, create underscore prompt, from the OpenAI functions agent library, to create a prompt automatically, where we can also pass in a custom system message. Putting those pieces together, we can now create the agent. Finally, we create the agent executor, the runtime for our agent. Now let's test it out. This is great, we have an agent. However, this agent is stateless, it doesn't remember anything about previous interactions. This means you can't ask follow-up questions easily. Let's fix that by adding in memory. The ability to store information about past interactions is memory. Langchain provides a lot of utilities for adding memory to a system, such as conversation buffer memory. These utilities can be used by themselves, or incorporated seamlessly into a chain. First, let's add a place for memory in the prompt. We do this by adding a placeholder for messages, with the key, chat underscore history. Next, let's create a memory object. We do this by using conversation buffer memory from langchain.memory, where we set memory underscore key, and return underscore messages. We can then put it all together and run it. Now, the agent has memory and is able to answer follow-up questions, based on previous conversations. Another important component of Langchain is callbacks. Langchain provides a callback system that allows you to hook into the various stages of your LLM application. This is useful for logging, monitoring, streaming, and other tasks. Langchain provides a few built-in handlers that you can use to get started. These are available in the Langchain callbacks module. The most basic handler is the stdout callback handler, which simply logs all events to stdout. Let's look at an example. First import the stdout callback handler along with other necessary libraries. Create an object of stdout callback handler and open AI model, and then create a prompt template.
Here, number is a placeholder for the user input. Now, let's construct the chain with LLM chain to which we pass LLM, prompt, and callbacks. The callbacks argument contains the object of stdout callback handler that we defined. Let's run this chain with value for the prompt input variable, number. We can also achieve the same functionality without explicitly passing callbacks argument, by setting verbose argument to true. The callbacks argument is available on most of the components such as chains, models, tools, agents, etc. Defining callbacks in the constructor like in this example is called as constructor callbacks. Now, let's look at another way of using callbacks, but this time with the run method of the chain. This way of passing callbacks to the run method is called as request callbacks. This also achieves the same functionality as the constructor callbacks, but the major difference between both of them is, constructor callbacks are used for all calls made on that object, and will be scoped to that object only. For example, if you pass a handler to the LLM chain constructor, it will not be used by the model attached to that chain. In contrast to this, request callbacks are used for that specific request as well as all sub-requests that it contains, including the model attached to the chain. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment below. Please like and share the video to other tech enthusiasts. And if you haven't already, remember to subscribe for more tech insights. Stay tuned, and keep exploring.